She had an incredible eye for what conditions creative people needed in order to be creative. She's a radical thinker. Mabel was very, very generous and very warm-hearted. Brilliant, aloof. She also did a lot for our tribe. She was so manipulative. She's difficult, she's bossy. She was a mover and shaker. She was the most interesting person to find out how she did things. She's a writer herself, and she's interested in uh, changing the conditions of society. Awakening in Taos is an intimate story about the passionate forces at work within the life of Mabel Dodge Luhan. Luhan was a social activist, writer, artist, visionary thinker, philosopher, salon hostess, and creative catalyst for change in society. Born before the dawn of the 20th century, Luhan began life in the Victorian age and then grew to embody the definition of a progressive new woman in the modern era. Our story begins in a rich and chaotic time of change as the modern world became industrialized and more people began living in metropolitan cities. Albert Einstein was in Germany developing concepts that radically changed the way men looked at the universe. World War I had begun just as Our Lady of Fatima had prophesied. Mabel Dodge functioned as a living muse, inspiring countless authors, poets, artists, photographers, and social activists. She was a tireless champion of modern art, social and labor movements, a spokesperson for the emancipation of women, and an evangelist for the preservation of the Native American's way of life. Luhan was passionate and vocal about social, environmental, and interracial issues during the 1910s through the 30s. As a writer and columnist for the Hearst newspapers, she had a national audience for her ideas. An active player and advocate for change in the world stage of her day, Luhan's inspired vision and free-thinking ideals paved the way for many positive forces in our lives today. What were the forces at the heart of Mabel Dodge Luhan's extraordinary personal power? guiding her vision that has forever changed our world. This documentary explores the unique life of a legendary woman and the impact she has sustained in politics, art, and culture to this day. I think that Mabel Dodge's greatest contribution was invisible. Her greatest talent was bringing creative people together in one place and fostering the release of their creative energies. She had seen work by a group of academic artists who did more realist depictions of the Pueblo Indians, and that group of artists was called the Taos Society of Artists. People have asked me, why did she pick Taos? And I'm not entirely sure, but she, the Tao Society of Artists at this time were very well known. In fact, they had just had a, an exhibition in New York. And Mabel had seen, I believe had seen some of the Indian paintings. She says that before she left New York, this very strong, handsome, dark Indian face appeared one night to her in a dream and blotted out Marisa's face. We know that she was a very mystical person. and perhaps chose Taos because no one had claimed it yet. Mabel arrived here with her third husband, Maurice Stern, in 1917. Mabel was a person who dared to break social boundaries. She deliberately broke with her privileged upbringing and her family, always wanting to find new and experimental friends and certainly through the succession of men she married, husbands. Um, the fact that she went from uh, an artist such as Maurice Stern to Tony Luhan, whom she married in the early 1920s, um, indicates a sort of shift, I think, in, in her outlook, a commitment to this new geographic region that she had come to love and a feeling I think that through Tony she somehow could connect more profoundly. The landscape was part of this love. In other words the power of the landscape, the earth and when Tony would take her out on these walks and when she would see him in the Pueblo it was as though the landscape and Tony became one. 
When she decided to move to New Mexico in 1917, it's, it's not surprising that she wanted to take this kind of salon or uh, open house evenings with her. And that she proceeded to do, adding people through invitation, encouraging them to visit her in New Mexico, and hoping to recreate, although in this new environment, some of the same stimulating exchange of ideas that she had enjoyed in Europe and in New York. And that's exactly at the time where Mabel Dodge Luhan is discovering the West, discovering New Mexico and grounding herself in, in the West. And what she will do there is extremely important because it's important historically, it's important aesthetically, it's important um, culturally. With the West, uh, American artists don't have to do the pilgrimage to Europe any longer. Everything in America could be made new again. There was no attachment to a past that was already over. Maurice writes her in September, uh, November, of 1917. Dearest girl, you must come out here. There is something between you and the Indians. What H Emily Hapgood is doing for the Negroes, you could be doing for the Indians. You could help to save their culture and their uh, way of life. Please come. And Mabel said, oh, well. We had uh, been working with one of the artists, Ansel Adams, up in Ranchos. And Ansel was a friend of Mabel's. And he said, you know, Mabel has a lot of work that she needs to be done. And you people would be the ones to do it. And of course, the first question I asked her was, did she feel free? She kept on saying, you know, little girl, she said, you can have anything you want to in life if you set your mind to it. Dr. Tony Lujan got married to Mabel. and. Uh... He left uh, Candelaria. Uh, he was ousted from the village. The Luhans are a very old, important family in the tribe. They had positions of power in the tribal government. They still do. He was Kiva trained, very well related, a powerful and important man. He had to give all that up when he married a white woman. It was sort of a shock to the family. It was, uh, it hurt the family a lot because he married Mabel Dodge. The tribe decided he had no close relation with the tribe anymore. Stuff like that was denied and taken away because of the fact that he had married a white lady. And I'm sure to many of the Indians of the Pueblo, uh, Mabel incurred their undying wrath for that. There were several good reasons for her to marry Tony Lujan. One was that he was an extremely emotionally stable. He was a deeply masculine man, but he did not need to manipulate her. He did not need to use him for his muse. He wasn't going to write about her. She, he did not, she did not have to feel that with him somehow you know, she was going to have her powers taken by him for some reason. She loved not only writers, but very famous conductors, poets like Robinson Jeffers from California, from Big Sur, were spent time here. Thomas Wolfe, the writer. She collected incredible personages. She was never bored, because if she got bored, she would literally invite the world to her door. One of the reasons Edge of Tao's Desert is so powerful a memoir, it is still in print, it's the only one of her memoirs still in print, it has sold many thousands of copies. Many people have said to me how incredibly, they, how moved they are by it. it. has to do with the ways in which Mabel simplifies her writing and has a kind of visual clarity that is extraordinary that you don't see in any of the other volumes. The relief at coming back to the reality of the bright, confident day was overwhelming. I could feel my quivering nerves and my loud, frightened heart gradually compose themselves after a lifetime of concealed apprehension and alarm. I lay there and gave myself up to the luxury 
of being at peace within the framework of a vast, beautiful creation, safe.